And I wrote these words out in the shift. Believing that you're separate from God. The collective consciousness of humanity painfully and unnecessarily influences us by believing in and behaving like an ego-designed God. Those are my words. An ego-designed God. We've created a God out of our egos that matches our false selves. A few of the attributes of this ego-designed God are that it plays favorites, that it craves opulence, that it promotes killing and warfare in the name of God, that it accepts indulgences for special favors, that it punishes bad behavior, that it needs to be avenged. These and many other attitudes illustrated a God created by the illusions of the collective ego. Throughout history, this ego-designed or man-made God is characterized as separate from us. Who among us hasn't heard of God portrayed as a white, dead male with a long, flowing beard who floats around the heavens with supernatural powers, watching over us like a cosmic bellboy who will answer our prayers sometimes, depending upon his whims and whether we've obeyed his rules? This God is viewed not as an all-giving divine source, but rather as a temperamental superpower who withholds his ability to solve our problems or heals our diseases, depending upon whether he's in the mood to grant us special dispensation. This is a God of the ego, created by ego and dedicated to serving ego's demands. This is a God that must, by virtue of its own ego, be separate from the subjects that it must watch over, control, and punish when necessary. And that's what it looks like. This idea that we are separate from God. It's not blasphemy to say that I am God, which doesn't make me better than anyone else because that's not the God from which we originated. The God from which we originated, the source of all things, is benevolent is loving. It doesn't know how to make distinctions. The memory of God comes to the quiet mind. It cannot come where there is conflict. For a mind at war with itself remembers not eternal gentleness. What you remember is a part of you. For you must be as God created you as your source created you. Remember, you didn't come from your parents. You came from the void. Let all this madness be undone for you and return in peace to the remembrance of God still shining in your quiet mind. In Australia, not too long ago, I was on The Tonight Show there, and the woman asked me the question, what is, what is your mission? And I just blurted out, to live a God-realized life. She said, what does that mean? And I just thought, I just, just thinking like whatever the source of all things thinks like to be in alignment with that. Just to think that way. That's all. Just to think that way and act that way. That's what I'd like to do. That's how I'd like to live my life, for whatever days I have. And as we now start to make the U-turn, we're going to come back and we start heading in a different direction. We start coming back to what T.S. Eliot said. We shall not cease from exploration. And at the end of all of our exploring will be to return to the place from which we originated and to know it for the first time. And one of my favorite quotes is from uh, Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick. And uh, when I read it in college, I thought I was reading a book about a man chasing a whale. And now I realize, having read it again, that uh, it's about a man trying to find himself and his passion and to live his passion. And Melville would go out onto the, uh, he lived in western Massachusetts back in the 19th century. And uh, he would lie down on the cornfields in western Massachusetts with his head up so that he could get a vision of what it must have been like to be out there on that ocean all by himself. And all he could see was corn silk. I read this in a biography of Melville. And he would just stare at this, the immensity of this. And that's just what he would imagine. And, and then he wrote these words. He said, for as this appalling ocean 
surrounds the verdant land, so in the soul of man lies one insular Tahiti, full of peace and joy, but encompassed by all of the horrors of the half-lived life. I just don't think writing gets much better than that. Go to Tahiti. <laughs> Find that place within. Go within and let the ego be scorched, as Ramana Maharshi put it.